Hi there, welcome along to another training video just made for you. Today I'm calling this one bread and butter because this is the bread and butter row that you can always come back to. We're going to start off with a four minute warm up and then it's going to be 30 minutes at 20 strokes per minute. Simple day, okay? Although the warm up will be split up a little bit. Make sure to set up your machine first, set your drag factor, put your monitor at a height where it's at eye level, and set your foot plates so that your feet are in the correct position. Usually that is so that the straps cover the joint at your toes, which is commonly if you're wearing shoes, unlike me, on the bottom lace of your shoes. Okay, so strap in, put four minutes on your monitor, or just look at the clock and roll along with me, okay? We're just gonna take it really nice and gently first. Just remind your body of what's about to happen to it. Okay, so I'm down at run about 18 to 20 strokes per minute. Just get those legs driving. Put the power in, nice and gently. Think about your position. Try and keep your back powerful. So we're gonna do two minutes of this, and then we're gonna do one minute single legged and then one minute using arms only and legs only, okay? Now when I say think about position, let's talk about the catch first, okay? Think shins first. Try and get your shins vertical at the front without having to lift your heels too far off. So you want your shins vertical when you get to the front of the stroke. Now think about having relaxed arms at the front as well. So nice relaxed arms and a slight forward lean. Okay, and at the finish, you want to reverse that lean. So you're effectively going from one o'clock at the front to 11 o'clock at the back. And handle over your knees, over your knees, lean forwards, and into the front again. Over your knees, lean forwards. Okay? The handle over your knees helps engage that hip rock forwards. It's all from the hips. Okay, 10 seconds to go on this. And then we're going to do single leg. So take one of your feet out and just drive with one leg. Okay? Really feel the connection at the front. Okay? Drive with the leg. Full strokes. I know I started with little jerky ones, but I was just trying to show you what to do. <laughs> okay, swap legs. Full strokes. Drive nicely with your single leg. Feel that point at the front when you pick up the handle, the catch. And your kind of dead leg can just relax and rock back and forth. A couple more strokes of this. And then we're going to just put both feet back in and just do arms only. So here you go. So just arms away. So keep your legs nice and straight. Pull in, arms away, rock forwards. Think about this hip. Forwards and backwards. Okay, arms away, rock forwards. Now I've got a bad habit of slumping my back. Please don't follow that. Okay, now we're just gonna do legs only. So come to the front, drive with straight arms, okay? Drive, straight arms. Try not to take it all on your lower back, like what I just did. Try and finish it. Stay leaning forward if you can. All right, we're almost at the end of this gentle warm-up. Usually it's a bit more of an aggressive warm-up than this, but because main session, right, last stroke, because the main session is a bit simpler than normal. I didn't really see the need, the need sorry, to program a particularly tough warm-up, okay? So I'm gonna do 30 minutes at 20 strokes per minute. 
and that's all. Just keep up with me, watch me for stroke rate. Um, effort wise, if you are used to training with a 2k plus something pace, then try and aim for around about 2k plus 18 for this. If you don't fancy or don't know uh, working from that point of view and you just want effort, then you're kind of thinking, kind of around about 6 out of 10, 6 RPE uh, rate of perceived effort. It's hard work, you're breathing heavy, or sorry, you're breathing harder, you break a sweat, but you're perfectly fine, okay? Even the fact that I'll be able to talk the whole way through this should show how simple a row it is, okay? So you should have recovered. Um, take a little sip. Set your monitor, or use the clock at the top of the screen. Uh, select workout, standard list. 30 minutes is the fourth one down, and then 30 minutes comes up on your screen, okay? So feet back in, and if you're ready to go, let's go, and I'll talk you through it, okay? Okay, so the good thing about 20 strokes a minute is that it's just one stroke every three seconds. So you just have to count down in threes. It sounds simple, but I can almost guarantee I'll mess it up at one point. Now, if you train a lot and you are used to the 2k time plus 18 you should have already hit whatever groove you need to if you don't train that way and you're doing it just as a RPE 6 out of 10 try to find your pace as quickly as you can and hover around that And then once you've got your pace, we can start thinking more about technique and what we're going to be doing for half an hour. Just you and me together. You're stuck listening to me. Just follow along with me for stroke rate. So all you have to think about is what you're doing in the stroke. how hard you're driving with your legs. What you don't want to see is the time on the monitor varying wildly up and down, up and down. Just try and find your pace. It's a good thing about sticking to a stroke rate. is that as long as you stay to the same stroke rate and you feel like you're putting in the same amount of power to each stroke you should be maybe wobbling a second or two up and down but not 10 seconds up and down Going up to three minutes gone. You should be nowhere near exhausted at this stage. You should, in fact, be able to pretty much climb off and not even need a shower. This should just be sliding you into the row. If you are exhausted and panting like a cocker spaniel, do they pant? They're panting like a dog. And you've gone out too, too hard at the beginning. So back off a couple of seconds on the monitor. If you were doing two minute splits, take it down to 2.02, 2.03. See if that settles you down. Just keep the stroke rate going.
Right, so we're four minutes gone. Just assess what's going on with your technique. So, into the front, shins vertical. Just think about that. Into the front, think, are my shins vertical? I think so. Next, think about your shoulders and your arms at the front. Are they relaxed? Can you wobble them? Or are you stick tense? So nice and relaxed. Straight arms at the front. Keep them straight until now. So you don't want to bend your elbows too soon. Straight arms, nice and relaxed. Are you leaning forwards when you get into the front? Not too far. You're not trying to headbutt the monitor. But as you get into the front, do you have a forward lean from the hips? Now, I have an issue that some of you have too, which is that I lean from my back, not from my hips. So just think, if you're leaning forward at the front, is it coming from the hips? Or is it coming from the back? Okay, you want it from the hips. And how do you help that? First off, think about handle away from the, from your, over your knees before your knees bend. Okay, hands away, knees bend. <clears throat> Getting your handle over your knees before they bend engages that hip swing setting you up as you get into the catch at the front. So you're already in the lean position. You don't have to awkwardly come forwards and then lean. That's a no-no. It's all about efficiency of your stroke plus injury prevention. Maybe you've hurt your back rowing the wrong way and then when you get the feels for it the right way it doesn't hurt. So handle over knees, then bend knees, hip rock. If you want to get to the finer points of it, really think about a leg drive at the front. So when you're here, it's a drive from the legs. You push with your legs. Push it, don't pull it. There is a pulling action involved, obviously, but it's here. It's a tiny part of the stroke, here. sequence, if you don't know it, is legs, back, arms, back, legs. <laughs> so legs, legs, back, legs, back, arms, 
And then on the return, arms, back, legs. Wow, I managed all that without losing stroke rate. So it's all about efficiency of stroke and stopping you getting injuries. There's rowers out there who have a less than ideal stroke, let's say, but they go very fast. And then you try and get them to, oh, hang on, 10 minutes, gone. In now, well done. Good job. Hope you're keeping up with me. Uh, yeah, rowers who have a less than ideal stroke, but they're very fast because they've got big muscles. <laughs> and then someone tries to change the stroke to a more patterned one. They try it a couple of times. And then they just go a lot slower because they're not used to it and they say there's something wrong with the stroke but then they go out and do the 500 meter race and something goes twang in their back because they're yanking on the machine with their arms like they're trying to start a lawnmower these people would just stick with a more efficient stroke they'd find that they'd go a heck of a lot faster but hey there's no telling people sometimes everybody has quirks in their stroke this is about you not me but like I said I have this issue with my back. I think all of my videos will at one point say I have an issue with my back. Not that you care about me. It's all about what you can get out of this. So what you can get out of it is learn good sequencing. And that poor sequencing can make you artificially tired because your muscles are fighting against each other <clears throat> hope you're still in the 20 stroke pocket remember just follow along with me even if your monitor drifts down to 19 or up to 21 don't worry about it Sometimes the PM monitor in front of you or on whatever machine you're using has a bit of a hiccup. As long as you follow along with what I'm doing, you'll always be at 20 strokes a minute. So that's 260 strokes done already. Can you believe it? Also, let's think about your hands. You're not choking the life out of the handle when you're rowing. You want a nice relaxed grip. You're pretty much hooking around. Slightly closed thumb and forefinger. But you're not gripping for dear life. You're not fighting a snake. 
you're using the handle as a way to get the force into the machine from your legs. And the best way to do that is with relaxed arms and a relaxed grip. And then as you connect the drive at the front, the power goes into the handle, into the flywheel, and you go fast. Now I've started to sweat now a bit. And obviously, I'm slightly laboured breathing wise, but you try talking for 15 minutes while rowing. That said, there's videos on YouTube of guys doing flat out 2K races. Oh, obviously not flat out. But the row like a 620 2K, which is fast. And they talk you through it, as though it was a walk in the park. Madness. I hope you're holding on okay. Just remember, you should really have hit a groove I'm not going especially fast, mostly because I'm talking to you. Hi. So, it just says 205 on my screen. And it's just hung around there. Every now and then, it'll drop to 204. We'll climb to 206, but mostly 205. Just so you know, and for my ego, of course, I'd normally do this about 158 pace because my 2k average is one minute 40 seconds per 500 meters, okay? Which, you maths whizzes, will work out my 2K is around six minutes 40. So, with a 140 average, plus 18, that gives one minute 58. is my pace for this. But if you were just dialing in just over 50% power, you should still be there, albeit maybe slightly out of breath, a bit sweaty, but you shouldn't be looking and realizing there's 12 minutes to go and panic. Don't panic. You should be so comfortable that you want to speed up, but don't. And this is why this is called the bread and butter row. This is your bread and butter. This builds your engine. It builds your stroke. Get a chance to think about technique and sequencing. You get to do some UT2 or kind of lower mid-range heart rate training which builds the foundation of your cardiovascular system without destroying you. So realistically you should be able to jump on your machine and do this workout every single day of your life. 
Now, I love rowing, but even for me, a uh, 30 minute, 20 strokes per minute every day for the rest of my life, I get a bit dull. And if you're doing it along to this video every day, good grief, that would be dull. And this is why we vary things. You go a lot faster for shorter periods or for shorter intervals at least. You go slightly faster at slightly shorter intervals but longer. So you'll see other videos on here that are like five times eight minutes with two minutes rest in between. So you can go a bit faster on them but the recovery time gives you a chance to well, recover before the next one. <clears throat> so by mixing it up, not only do you prevent yourself getting bored, you prevent your body getting bored as well. Because it'll eventually just get used to this UT2 kind of RPG6 effort and adapt quite quickly. It'll just be a little harder to properly build your engine. But that said, if you have quite a varied training schedule anyway, and one day you sit down and think, what shall I do today? This is the perfect row to come back to time and time again. As long as it's not time and time and time and time and time and time again. Throw something else in from time to time. Closing in on 22 minutes gone. 440 strokes. So if you're doing the stroke right, that's like 440 kind of easy squats. And then if you're keeping a powerful back at the finish of the stroke, I feel like doing 440 easy ab exercises. <clears throat> and again, you shouldn't need a calculator to have worked out 30 minutes, 20 strokes a minute. You're going to end up doing 600 strokes by the end of this. And that is why you're a bit sweaty and slightly out of breath. But you should maybe not be able to hold a conversation if you're at the right pace. Like I said, I've dropped a little bit so I can talk to you. But we should at least be able to get the odd line out talk to the person next to you. Tell them what you're doing. Who you're watching on your phone. <coughs> Some Scottish idiot. So, fractions alert, but we're about to hit four-fifths gone, 
150 to go. Oop. Uh, monitor glitch. There we go. All back in it again. My question is, are you wearing shoes? <laughs> if so, what shoes are you wearing? Do you find you connect with the foot plate correctly? Or, like some people, do you row in socks to get a good solid connection with the plate so you can really drive your heels into the foot plate and get the most out of it. I feel it also stops yanking on the straps at the end of the stroke. You're not really meant to pull on the strap in order to pull yourself up the rail. That's not the point. Going back about 20 minutes into this row, remember, arms away, and that forward momentum brings you back up the rail. So your leg drive finishes before you pull in with your arms. So you're not stopping any reverse momentum by yanking on the strap. Because if you yank on the strap at the end, that's wasted energy. That's force that should be going in to the flywheel that you're just soaking up in your legs. Good technique for that is to take your feet out of the straps. Ah, there you go. See? Now if you take your foot out of the straps and you're used to yanking on the strap to bring you back up the rail, you'll probably have fallen off the back of your machine by now. Don't do that. So a better idea is to loosen the straps, okay? So make them a good chunk above your shoes, but enough that if you get it wrong and you need to steady yourself on them, you can still catch yourself on the strap. <clears throat> now, I know this isn't about me, and I keep on trying to make it about me. It's about you. But, remember I said I was rowing around about 205 before, taking my feet out the straps. I'm still doing 205. It gets harder to maintain a pace strapless the faster your stroke rate gets. I think once I get past 24, it all falls apart for me. Two minutes to go. But if you want an extra challenge, extra credit for your 30 minutes of 20, safely take your feet out the straps, give yourself that safety net I was on about, and see what happens. It certainly works the core more and it makes sure you don't waste power from a stroke. Don't let your technique crumble just because there's almost only a minute to go. Shins vertical at the front, arms straight and relaxed. Arms over knees. Back going from one o'clock to eleven. Here we go. 
One minute, 20 strokes. Ten strokes ago, that's it, come on. He's on 590 so far. Don't stop with just 10 to go. Assuming you've held a pretty constant pace the whole way, you should feel awesome the moment you stop this. <laughs> There we go, 600 strokes, 30 minutes, 20 strokes a minute. Like I said, you should be kind of sweaty, breathing a little bit heavy, but not, not lying on the floor, so you should be fine. Anyway, hope you enjoyed watching this video, whatever platform you watched it on. If you want to find out more about what I do, there's a website called pdprowing.com. And I've also got something that's all about indoor rowing called indoorrowinginfo.com. If you check them out, you'll see more about that. And I'll obviously keep watching this channel or this part of the app to see other videos from me. Thanks for rowing with me today. I really appreciate your company. Have a good day.